Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. Oh, worthy. Oh, we're going to partake of our communions. This bread represents the body of Jesus that was broken for us. You said in your word, Father, do this as you often as you would as we partake of this bread. And we thank you for it, that his body was broken for us. Anyway, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. We're going to wait on you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Praise your Lord. Hallelujah. Praise. Bring my volume up a little bit, please, on my mic. Praise God. My mic, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. This bread represents the body of Jesus that was broken for us. You said in your word, Father, do this as you often as you would, as we partake of this bread. Let us now commune together. This cup represents the blood of Jesus. That by the blood of Jesus, we have a blood-bought right to come before your presence without a sense of guilt, without a sense of condemnation. That by the blood, Father, we have a blood-bought right to have our prayers and get help in the time of need. That by the blood, Father, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb the word of our testimony. Therefore, Father, today we declare we overcome every opposition that come our way in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. We thank you, Father, by the blood, all our sins that have been given past and future. We thank you by the blood, Father, that by his stripes we are healed. We thank you, Father, by the blood. We are what we are by your grace, and we thank you for it this morning. We thank you by the blood, Father, we can present our body a living sacrifice, Father, holy, acceptable unto you, which are our reasonable service or our reasonable worship. And we thank you by the blood, Father, we have a blood-bought right to have the presence of the Holy Spirit today in our lives. Holy Spirit, we say you are welcome here today. We say have your way. You're our friend, our advocate, our comforter, our guide. You're the greater one that lives on the inside, the greater you, Holy Spirit, that is other than the devil that's in this world. And Father, you said, do this as often as you would. As we partake of this cup, let us now commune together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We give you glory, give it out in praise. We thank you, Father God, this word will be sown on good ground and it will bear fruits in the hearts of the people. And I give you glory, give you honor and praise. Right now, Heavenly Father, I ask that you anoint the ears of the hear, to hear what the Spirit of God will have to say. I do, Father, ask you today that each one here and those that watch it by internet will hear this word accurately and they will hear it precisely. And they will not just be hearers of what they hear today, but they will go out and be doers of it. Realize, Heavenly Father, to do is to get the results. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and all the admiration for that in Jesus' name. Right now, Heavenly Father, I thank you have that fresh anointing to minister your word. I thank you, Father God, the anointed is on your word. I thank you, Father God, your word is what is powerful. Your word is what produces results in people's lives. And I give you glory and honor and praise. And I do, Father, ask you now, I will speak this word accurately, and I will speak it precisely, and I will speak it boldly and with authority. For I lives that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I will lives, Heavenly Father, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and it is the strength of my life. I pray it now, Father God, in this message, all of you and none of me right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that revelation knowledge shall flow freely today, uninterrupted, unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. I thank you, Father, your worship not be turned to you void, but it shall accomplish as that it would do. Also, Father God, thank you, you the Lord thy God that cannot lie, and you confirm your word with signs, Father, and therefore I declare the signs shall follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, glory to God. We started our series, Living the Life of Grace Through Faith, and we said that no matter what, everything has to come through faith. From the time you got born again, it came through faith. Amen? I'm, you could believe in God for a cause. Whatever you're believing for, it's got to come through faith. And guess what? The car is already in the grace realm. It's already been provided. But see, my issue is I have to try to pull it into this physical world. Amen? But it's done in the spiritual world. That's when God made a statement. He said, I, he said, I have blessed you with all blessing or empowerment in spiritual places. I, in spiritual places. 
So everything we want is already exists in the spirit realm. Like I always say all the time, hey, the corn is already in the ground. The corn is waiting for some seed and water to produce. Your ground, which is your spirit, is just like the physical ground, in a sense, an example of it. Okay, guess what? Your spirit, man, is waiting for the word, of the seed of the word, and is waiting on you to water it, too. A lot of people sometimes don't water it. They get the seed, and guess what? Satan comes with the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches to choke the word, to make the word of God unfruitful. Now, the Bible says he comes immediately. He don't, he don't wait. He comes immediately because he wants that word because he knows that word will produce something in your life. So he tells his demons, go get the word, word, go get the word, get the word, get the word, bring all the cares of this world, find as many cares as you can get, bring it to them. So they get all concerned about that and not the word. And they, they, and they little demons report back Satan. I did this or that one today. I did this or that one today. I got them more involved than they worked in the word. Oh yeah. That's what's happening. How you know that? Because the Spirit of the Lord told me. <laughs> Amen. You, 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 don't think, you, don't, you don't think demons have conversations with one another? Now, you can't hear their conversation, but guess what? They will express their conversation through men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Look at that foundation scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 again. For by grace are ye saved through what? So your salvation and you got saved came through faith. It did not come through the law. The Bible talks about said the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into the knowledge. It was the school. What, what schoolmaster? What do you mean by schoolmaster? It was our schoolmaster to let us know how, how much we needed God with all the sin we had. Matter of fact, the Bible said the law increases sin. The law makes you want to sin more. For by grace are you saved through faith. And it's not of yourself anything that you did. It was already provided for you when Jesus went to the cross and died. Died and came back and initiated it. Started some off in the, New, in, in the Old Testament, well, through Matthew and John, but, but they didn't understand where he was coming from. <laughs> Let's go on. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourself. Let's go on. It's a gift of God. Everybody said, grace is a gift. Now look at yourself and say, what am I doing with the gift that God gave me? And guess what? Through faith, through faith, God gave you another gift. He gave you the gift of a pastor, the gift of a prophet. He gave you all these different gifts. And how you treat the gift. Amen. Let's go on. That's it. Okay. Praise God. Well, I, I, I got to tell you the next one. That's what it is. I just want to be, read a back or two again. Two, four. And then we're going to go on what we want to go into today. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him now. He's telling them, your soul is not upright. Now, I told you before, how you straighten out your soul? You renew your mind on the word of God. Even though in the Old Testament they did certain things, but God even told them to meditate the word. There's a statement I think Jesus made. By your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. By your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. You either gonna speak God's word, which is life to your life, or you're gonna speak words contrary to God's words, which is death to your life. Now the Bible said, and I'm, I'm just, I've been working on my series the mouth again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
Death and life is in the power of your tongue. You're going to, Jesus made a statement. He said, you're going to have whatever you say. He didn't say you're going to have what you say. He said, you're going to have whatsoever you say. It. Meaning that's a process. It don't happen just like just because you say it right then. But you keep on saying it. And you keep on saying it. You keep on saying it. And guess the same thing that happens when you keep on saying the word. 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 Keep on saying it. I don't ask how many people use their creative power. I don't have time, Pastor. For a book would take you less than five minutes to go through and read to confess it. That's all. I know I do it. I do it every day. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Now watch this. But the just or the righteous shall live how? How are we gonna live? By faith. We gotta live by faith. So you the righteous people live by faith. Unrighteous people live by the law. When you see somebody always giving you the law, guess look, just look at them and say, you know they're unrighteous. Because the law could never produce righteousness. Hey, Amen. Look at the New Living Translation on that one. And then we'll go on. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves. That's what the world do. They, they don't, I, I don't need God. They trust in I don't have, I don't have to, oh, I, I believe in God, but I just don't, I just don't have time. You don't understand my work schedule. Baloney. You know, let me say something to you. I think the Jewish Sabbath is coming, whatever. Do you know the Jewish people, when they honor something, they honor it, even though they, their beliefs not believing in Jesus, but they still honor it. I'm sad they don't work. Y'all heard I said to you? They don't work. Now, I'm not trying to put you in the bondage and things like that, but I mean, but you know what? Still, no matter what, even though they don't know, it's a priority in their life. Is God a priority in our lives? There's things you can do, but understand I have to work. You know, do you know something? Do you know? You went on a job interview and you turned around and told them, hey, look, this particular day, you know, I have to do this. Do you know they really understand? Because you know why? They like to see people that are committed to something. But no, you're scared you might not get hired. <laughs> see, we as Christians, see, that's, see, right off the bat, that tells you that's fear. And God's not giving us me the fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. So you got to counteract that fear with what the words say. He said, look at the crowd. They trust in themselves. They trust. See, you, want, you can't follow the crowd. The crowd put Jesus on the cross, said crucify him. <laughs> Let's go on. And their lives are what? Crooked. Now look at this very carefully. He says, their lives are crooked. Do you know right now there's Christians, they think they're all right. I don't have to come here nowhere, and I don't have to do that, and they think they're all right. But guess what? Their lives are crooked and don't know it. See, a crook can look good. He can rob banks and look good until they catch him. <laughs> you know what I'm he can, ride, he can ride a nice car. But when they catch him, all that goes away. Amen. That's it for that, right? But watch this. But the righteous, but the righteous, that's us. We're the righteous. We'll live by their faithfulness to God or the same thing as their faith. We live by our, now notice what it says, faithfulness to God. I was talking to my wife, um, I was talking about worship. And, um, and the Lord shared with me, there are songs we sing that sing to God what God can do, what God has done, and, and, and that's good. But you know, sir, we got to keep that base where we kill, keep that true worship to him, like you deserve and, go, and giving glory and honor him. There's power in that. I, I, I was telling my wife, i never forget, we, we were leaving for something, and I, and I just thought, I took my mind off my some of that song that he is all my righteousness, I stand complete in him, I worship you. 
And one of the parts of the song said, I forget about myself. I forget about myself. That's, that, that, you, you know somebody, the Lord has somebody put that song in somebody. I forget about myself and I concentrate on you and I worship you. That's what I get. I worship you. Never mind, because you know, you, Lord, you already told me you can perfect everything that concerns me, so why I got to spend my time worrying about things that you said you already perfected? So you already perfected the spiritual. My job is to worship you, and my job is to correspond with what you have already done to me. That's it. It's simple. It, 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 this is not complicated. Just spend more time with him, and he'll minister to you about these things. But it, make a long story short, but I start singing this song. Hallelujah, I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, I praise you, Lord, for your mercy and goodness. And I'm going to, hallelujah. People don't want to sing the songs no more. And even some of the novel nations, they used to sing that song. They might not ever know everything to me, but they would sing that song. And the greatest thing in all my life is loving you. The, see? You understand what I'm saying to you? What are you doing? You're romancing God. I know the guy, Ben Tank, he has a song he called Minister, Ministering Romance, but he was talking about ministering romance to God. See, God is love. He put his love in us so we can love him back. Who? What greater love than a man lay his life down? When you should be building up to the Easter stuff. We don't build up the Easter. Easter. <laughs> we build up and thank God for what Jesus has done every day. It don't have to necessarily be on Easter Sunday. It's really, really resurrection. He read, rose some, somewhere between Saturday, Saturday night and Saturday, Sunday morning, but it, it really don't matter. He rose. <laughs> Amen. Let's get into what we want to get into today. Hallelujah. Wow. I want to go back to this so I can take off of what I want to take. I want to go back to Galatians 3 again. And then we're going to, because that, this is going to balance that. Go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. Because so many people in the church are hung up on the law. And the Bible says, now watch this very careful. It says, study to show yourself approved. Rightly dividing the word of truth, which indicates somebody could be wrongly divided. What makes you think you're right? Because I spend time with the Holy Spirit. I'm be right. Now, doesn't mean I can't make an error. But you know what? If, if, if something is going, on, I, I have no problem admit I took I, I took the wrong way. That's the problem with the church. Men don't want to admit that. Oh, that was wrong. I, was, I, I did that wrong. No. This thing I might have said, and I, I'm, I'm willing to I'm willing to go back and correct it. Maybe it was out of the Holy Spirit that said it, but I might have said it. <laughs> you, you, you got what I'm saying to you? And sometimes you, you have to be careful what you, what you listen to. Like I, I, I told you, people go around, they, they think that's humble, but it's really spiritually stupid. My rags is the dirty rags. So Jesus made, came that you might become righteous, and then you call it the dirty rags. See, that was law. Their Jewish people, their righteousness was as dirty rags because they were sinners. And what saved them? They had a covenant, and God would allow them to bring animal sacrifices for their sin on a yearly basis. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the one type, one final sacrifice, that's Jesus Christ. If you want to go back to animals, the Bible said there is no sacrifice for you. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews. See, the problem, we, stay, we, we preach all these sermons in the Old Testament all the time and don't go to the New, so you can't really see what God was doing in the Old because you saw in the Old, because they couldn't see it. Now, what makes you think you're going to spend time all the time preaching the Old Testament? You're going to see what's needed to be seen, seen because the Israel didn't see what was supposed to have been seen. Had they seen what supposed to have been seen, they would have never missed Jesus Christ. The Bible said the gospel did not profit them because it was not mixed with what? Faith. It did not profit them. 
Amen. Romans, what did I say? Galatians 3, verse 10. 3, 10. Watch this. For as many as are the works of the law are under a curse. I'll say it again. For as many as are under the works of the law are under a curse. You're going to follow the law, you are under a curse. Don't let some minister tell you your family have a generational curse if you're born again. You kick that lying preacher out of your house if he's in there. I'm serious. I mean, I had a situation with somebody I know, and they got, he went through a divorce, and they got remarried. And this certain denomination came in their house and said, you need to go back to your wife. Now, they're going to have a child together. So they need to go back to their other wife to be right with God. That's stupid. And there was always provision. The divorce thing was under the law. It was not under the new covenant. And God knows people are going to make errors. And God also made a statement that said, except for adultery, he made certain conditions. But understand this. Listen to this. Jesus went to a woman at the well. Now listen to this. And she said, our father worshiped this world. And he said, the woman that I was coming with a true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. And he said something about husband. He said to her, thou hast, go back to your husband or something. And he said to her, thou hast seven husbands. Was it seven? I think it was seven. Yeah. That has said. So he honored the fact that she had, she had different husbands. Mm. Now that's not, that's not, divorce is not God's best for you. You understand? That's not, that's not God's best for you. But sometimes it does happen in situations. God's best is for you to get into the word as a couple so you know the word and you don't want to, want to get a divorce. Amen. My wife could have divorced me. Her girlfriend told me, get rid of the coon check. He ain't no good. <laughs> she said, no, I'm going to speak the word. I'm going to speak the word over. See, so this, is, this here is a supernatural manifestation right here by Almighty God. Not by me, because I, I didn't want to be no preacher. Not what I saw. Didn't, didn't, didn't want it at all wasn't even looking for it. I was enjoying myself. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that's another deception. But see, that's when you can't give up praying for your loved ones. You got all the power. You got God. You got, you got everything that's necessary to pray in faith. As a matter of fact, when you pray in tongues, it's Bible says you're praying in your most holy faith. That's most holy. So you need to put most holy on them. <laughs> Amen. Let's go back. <laughs> metal, 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 metal. Let's go. <laughs> For as many as are the as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. Let's go on. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continue not in all things. So you gonna follow, are you continuing all things he said? Are you continuing 613 of them that he said? Are you doing them all? Preacher, doubt so holy, doing 613 of them? No way, you probably ain't doing the 10. Boy, you hit hard. Sometimes ministers, sometimes ministers need to be hit hard. I'm serious. Let's go back. For it has been cursed everyone that had continued not in all things. It's gone. <coughs> but that no man is justified, that means declared righteous, by the law in the sight of God. 
So right, righteous means right standing with God. So that tells me you following the Lord, you're not in right standing with Almighty God. Now, the time I hear people, you got to get right with God. You got to get right with God. What they mean getting right with God is try to do right. You get right with God when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Not based on your performance. Because let me tell you something. Everybody, the Bible said we're not perfect in our flesh, but understand this. You are perfect in your spirit but not your flesh. The flesh has to be worked on. And God tell you what to do with your flesh. Act like it's dead. Act like it died on the cross with Jesus. God's not looking at your physical sin. It's already been dealt with, spiritually and physically. Yes, you may sin, but you have provision that Jesus has already forgiven you all your sins, past and future. See, the church is so sin conscious. I, I, I've been to places in, in different denominations. Oh, we got to get back to preaching sin in the church. And when you start preaching sin, you're going to see a lot of sin in the church. Preach sin and sin will come. <coughs> and this particular church had a big, big church fight too. No wonder they preach a sin. Sin loved to fight. Yeah. Amen. That's gone. That no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Verse 12, I think it is. I jumped to 17. Hold on a minute. You don't have 13, 11, okay. That's, and nothing after that? I don't have I don't have Galatians 3 10 through 14 in there. There it is. Oh, watch this. And the law is not a faith. The law is not a faith. I'll say it again. The law is not a faith. See, if you're going to walk by faith, you walk by the law. And the law is not a faith. And the man that doeth them, the law, shall live in them. So if you're living by faith, you're going to do it. If you're living by the law, you're going to do the law. What it means doing the law? You're subject to all the curses. You're subject to all the, everything that goes with the law. Because you know what? You can't do it. You can't do it. Impossible. And when you read your Bible, listen very carefully, ladies and gentlemen. Just because it's in the, in the epistle does not mean it's not law. And people, people, people assume that. Like the scripture in the Bible says um, that he's just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Okay? Or put it like this. If we confess our sins, he's, if we confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us. Now understand, think about this. That verse, if you read 1 John chapter 1 and 2, John is telling, he said, I'm telling you this, that you may have fellowship, hello, or that you may have eternal life. So those people that he was talking to there in that epistle was not Christians. Because he goes down and tell, you confess your sin. Well, see, what they were familiar with, they were familiar, you go to Jesus, he would forgive you your sin when he walked the earth. Am I right or wrong? Amen. Okay? That he's faithful to, and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Now think about this. You as a Christian, and if you're righteous, and your righteousness is perfect already, how are you going to be cleansed? Is he talking about your flesh? Well, guess what? If he's cleansing your flesh, you should, you just should totally be clean. It's all right. It's not about your flesh. Like I said, to God, the flesh is dead. Israel, they, tried to walk, they could not walk in the spirit of God, so God dealt with everything based on the flesh. That's where all the animal sacrifices and the physical acts came into play. 
You know, you have to have certain things set up in sanctuary. I, I know, know those churches, they, 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 they really hung up, and, I, and I'm not down, I know God, he's really hung up, he's got he to gotta have real wine in the church. So he can get rid of the alcohol, he boils the wine before they have service. It's all symbolic. <laughs> Amen. Next verse, please. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. I ain't get forward this at all. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Everybody say, I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, if you go after the Lord, you're not, you're not acting like you're redeemed. And the Bible said, let the redeemed say so. Let the redeemed say so. I'm redeemed. Every morning I wake up in the morning, every single morning, I say, Father, I, think, I, think, I, am, I am what I am by your grace. I am the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. That's who I am. I define who I am. I let other people out there in the world define who I am. One lady, one time at work, tried to say something to me. She said, well, I think, I think you I think you this. I said, you don't know. I said, you don't even know who I am. <laughs> and, and, I, I say, and I tell people it boldly now sometimes. You know you're talking about yourself? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I said, I said you, you, you have to be talking about yourself. Because you don't know me, so where could you get that from? Except you like that. That's me. No, that's not me. That, that, that just, that's just saying, that, look, you think you're going to walk over top of me with your words and define who I am when God already defined who I am? That's an insult. You all okay? Amen. 14 now. Christ has redeemed us curse. Now watch what it says. Being made a curse for us. Jesus was made a curse for you and I. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree. And now we call it a cross, but that's what Jesus is hanging on. He became a curse for the whole world. He died for the whole world. For you and I. Verse 14. That, why, why did he do it? That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Now understand too, Israel, they were blessed as a result of Abraham. Now, we have a new covenant, but we also have the Abrahamic covenant. And the Bible said, we have a better covenant build on um, better promises than what they had. And the Bible talks about it, that before we got born again, we were alienated from the covenant, strangers to the covenant. We didn't know about the covenant. Hmm. But because of Jesus Christ coming down through the seed of Abraham, guess what happened? Now we know about the covenant of Abraham. We know we have both. We got the new covenant, and we got the Abrahamic covenant. Not the covenant of the law. <clears throat> the Abrahamic covenant was not a law. No, not law. I can just find that. Abrahamic covenant was not a law. God did not deal with Abraham by the law. God dealt with Abraham by grace. It said it was accounted to him for righteousness. So, of course, when Abraham lied to the king and said that was his sister, actually it was his half-sister, his wife. Okay, he didn't lie. And there's a verse in the Bible where Paul talks about, Paul talks about, he started to define stuff about children, obey your parents, and, 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 and things like that. And you would think that, that's in the Old Testament. You would think that's law. It's, it, was, it was not Mosaic law, it was moral law. I'm going to show you what moral law is. Joseph, when Joseph was walking with God, guess what? There was no law. How did Joseph not, to go, not 
No, not to go to bed with that king's wife. Mosaic law hadn't came about. Praise God. That's all right. I went off a little. It's okay. Now, that's going to happen a little bit. That's okay. That's your little pretty background. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> Amen. Now, where was that now? Okay, let's go on. Why did he do it? That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentile. So we got the Abrahamic blessing. Now, the Bible says Abraham was not just rich. The Bible said Abraham was very rich in cattle, gold. Hello? He was very rich. Amen. Now, let's get in this part. I, 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 I did a lot of... I didn't go for it, but that's all right. It's good. Titus 3.7. I'm going to show you some areas. Titus 3.7. That being justified by his grace, you were justified by his what? You were declared righteous by what? Now, by now, being a New Testament church, don't you think grace has to, something to do with everything? Paul even made a statement. If any man any minister any other gospel, let him be a curse. And he said it two times. And I tell you, sometimes you, you need to just sit there and read, read Galatians. Just read Galatians. It don't take long. And let me tell you, it, 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 it can set your life up. That being justified, declared righteous by faith. I'm, God grace, I'm sorry, not by faith. You being justified by his grace. You were justified, but faith is what brought it in. Amen. Now. Let's go. That we should make heirs be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Everybody say, I'm an heir. The Bible says you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Joint heirs. Y'all got that? Joint heirs. And how many Christians act like they're heirs? That we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now, watch this. Go to Romans 5, 2. Now, watch this. And I told you before, everything has to go through faith. Remember, everything comes through faith. Everything comes through. By whom also we have access by faith into the disgrace where we stand. How do we access grace, y'all? By what? If it's not by faith, you won't get it. It's not by the law. You're doing it by the law. You won't get grace. You got to do it by faith. Amen. Praise God. I guess I have time for this. I may not. Now I'm gonna have. I, I won't get into that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back to something else instead of getting into that. Go to Romans one sixteen. One sixteen here. Oh, no. Go to um, Romans 6, 14 and 15. That's what I'll close on. Romans 16, 14 and 15. Everybody, if you're under the law, you're going to struggle with sin. You're going to struggle with addictions, drugs. You're going to struggle with all these things. And a lot of people sometimes that are struggling with these addictions went to church. Man, I, I, I know a guy when we first started the ministry, he used to, I used to be, I was, we used to use a large, and I used to be up there singing, the music be playing, but I was having to look out of the window. He was a Sunday school teacher in church, and he's straggling and drunk in the morning like man. But you know something about that guy? He was faithful. Drunk in bondage, but faithful. Now watch this. This is how we look at sin. For sin shall not have dominion over you, but you're not under the law. 
I'm going to paraphrase something. I'm, I'm going to go back, I, but on the grace it says, but watch this, I'm going to paraphrase something. But sin shall have dominion over you as long as you're under the law. But sin shall have dominion under you, you, over you as long as you're under the law. And I read it right. But sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law. So sin don't have dominion over you. Let's go on. But under grace, everybody said, but I'm under grace. Mm -hmm. Grace. Next verse 15, and we'll close. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law? Watch. But under grace, God forbid. What is it? Say? God what? God forbid. And yeah. Think about it a minute. The Bible says, where sin abound, grace much more abound. So how do you conquer sin in your life? How do you conquer these troubles in your life? Through faith, by grace, by grace. See, grace will take away the desires of sin. Grace will make you don't want to sin. Now, I get people caught up in this thing. You mean to tell me, Pastor, um, just, just we got grace so we can sin all over, and that's not what he's saying. God forbid, you, you, you shouldn't strive to be sin. But if you do sin, guess what? All your sins have been forgiven. But with sin, there's consequences. Is it a sin to go to rob the bank? Is that a sin? But guess what? God will forgive you. But the popo is going to put you in jail. <laughs> and you're going to go to prison. If you kill somebody, it's a sin, but you're going to go to jail. Because there are physical laws still, there are laws in this earth. I don't believe God forgive a murderer. Yes, he did. It was one hanging on the cross with him. What are you talking about? See the stuff we say and, and don't, it's, it's not even biblical. And you're sitting there watching my internet and you know, you, you're sitting there and you're going to a church that's just as dead as it want to be. I'm going to say something to you. You're not getting no life for your life. Oh, yes. You are a good religious person. Praise the Lord. Your religion. God never created religion. And the Bible says religion, which is the same as tradition of men, makes God's word no effect in your life. Oh, you got religion? You'll be happy. People say you're a good religious member. I don't want to be a good religious member. I want to be in right standing with God, Amen. not men. Amen? That's who I am in right standing with him. And everything I do, I want to please God, not please men. Amen? Every head bow to eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you that this word is German written in the hearts of each and every one by the sound of my voice. I thank you, Father. I pray that those that watch the eyes of their understanding become further enlightened, Father, and they being filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, Father. That they are rooted and grounded in love, maybe to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, Father. And they know the club love of Christ, Father. And I thank you for it right now. And by the sound of my voice, you sitting there, you watching something today. You never heard nothing like this in your life. But I'm telling you, it's real. It's not phony. And you will know that by your spirit. And you're sitting there, Pastor, uh, you know, I, I need to get my life right with God. Things are not just right. Things, this is going wrong. Of course they're going to go wrong because you got a devil in the earth come to kill, to steal, and destroy. He want to mess your life up. God got a way to straighten your life up. You can't straighten it out yourself. You've probably tried 30 years to try to do it. It's not going to work. I tried. It don't work. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to make Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You could be a certain denomination, but never made Jesus as Lord. Or you don't have a personal relationship with God. Or you know about God, and you heard about God. You went to church, you heard about God, but you're not born again. Jesus said, a man must be, you must be born again. So I'm going to make it very simple for you. I'd like you to repeat this after me now. Those at home too. 
Say, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for me. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. And Jesus, you are now my Lord and Savior. Now, whether you know it or not, the angels are rejoicing. They're having a party. They have to have a party over one. Now, to get you started, you obey. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall down. You're going to mess up. But don't let the devil bring guilt on you. God already paid the price for all your mess, up, mess ups. But what you need to do is get yourself in a church that's teaching God's word on a consistent basis. And keep watching by internet. We encourage you to do that. Amen. But we'd like to hear from you. I'd like you to text, I am born again, to 973 283-5498. Text, I am born again to 973-283-5498. Also, you can go to our website, www.faithlove.org. Click on, and there's a, a, a heading on that said, Gifts of God's Love. Read that. Get you started. Start listening to some of the messages that's on the website. Amen. Praise God. Well, guess what time it is? It's an opportunity now for us to worship God with our finances. Amen. You can go to www.faithlove.org. Those that here that's, that's sitting, you desire a cedar lobe, raise your hand. That's an orphan envelope right now. And somebody will help you. Amen. What I'd like you to do is go to www.faithlove.org. Click on give. That's what you, all you have to do. Click on give. If you're giving a partner or whatever, you want to get in a partnership, go to www.robertcorporalministry.org. That's www.robertcorporalministry.org. Or if you desire to text give, you can text give by... Texting nine to nine seven three three five five seven seven one nine. If you desire to mail it, you may mail it to P.O. Box two zero zero four nine one Newark, New Jersey zero seven one zero two. I'll say it again. You can mail the P.O. Box two zero zero four nine one Newark, New Jersey zero seven one zero two. Amen. Praise God. Now, you're at home right now. The only thing we ask you to do, the Bible says, Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Only thing we ask you to do what God tells you to do. And I know God telling people to do things. I'm not even concerned about that. But you do what God tells you to do. Amen. If you want to uh, present your offer, we're going to pray. You can, uh, when you're doing it by phone, you can lift your phone up to the Father, however, however you want to do it at home. Amen. And you're going to mail it. You can just do a raise it and then just put it in the mail. Amen. And you, you fill with the Spirit, praying tongues over it. Amen. So lay, raise your offer before the Lord. Repeat after me. So, Father God, we thank you for the seed time and harvest principle. We realize it is for kingdom building that your covenant may be established in the earth. To so Lord Jesus, my high priest, we ask you to present these tithes. Father, on my behalf, as an act of love and kindness to what Jesus has done. I give you glory and honor and praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. See you going grow and see you real soon. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise God that you were blessed. I, I like to encourage you. You're also welcome to come out to one of our services, 8 a.m. on Sunday morning, 380 Broad Street, Newark, New Jersey. Also, we invite people who like to come out. We have prayer on Saturday morning, every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. You're welcome to come out. You spill with the Spirit. We, we pray for the city. We pray for things that are going on in the community because it's, it's important, ladies and gentlemen. Prayer is important. And we pray that most highest form of prayer. And you're not filled with the Spirit. Come on Saturday morning. You get filled with the Spirit, too, if you desire to have that. Amen. Praise God. We want you to know we love you so very much, and God loves you. Now the name is able to keep you from falling to present you faultless. I want you to go in peace and his grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.